Ahoy, ahoy. Welcome to another video. This week, I'm gonna be continuing on with my 1850s project. And this time, I'm finally moving on and sewing something that's not underwear. I'm about to get started on the skirt. Now you're gonna need to get really used to me saying this, but the 1850s were all about width. The skirts of this era were full widths of fabric gathered onto a waistband, either with pleats, gauging, which you in modern usage may also seen called cartridge pleating, or a combination of both. Plain skirts existed, but the most fashionable ones had many tiered flounces just to give even more volume and mass. The trims would go along the edge of the flounces and they could be all sorts of things, lace, contrasting strips of fabric, tassels and fringe. The 1850s also really loved a horizontal stripe. My skirt is going to be made using that curtain that I talked about in my last fabric haul video. It's gonna have two tiers and I'm gonna trim them at the edge with some navy blue velvet ribbon and uh, some fringe. I'm going to gauge it onto the waistband, which in 10 years of historical costuming is actually something I've never done. As I've said in my intro video, I've managed to avoid all that business between like 1835 and 1865, so that's probably why I haven't done this before. It's a little bit intimidating. I'm gonna be using a combination of historical and modern theatrical techniques. VoiceOver GAN will give you more details of what I'm doing where. So let's get sewing. So these are my materials and this is just the curtain, this fringe that now, now I feel like it kind of looks like Wookiee fur, but whatever. Um, and this navy blue velvet ribbon. Oh, I got a lot of that. There's also the um the cotton lining, but that's just being washed. So that's that's what we're gonna be working with. Hi, this is voiceover Gan. The skirt begins with big panels of my cotton lining. I'm leaving it open until the very end because it's easier to work with and you can lay it flat. I did a blind hem on the machine since it's going to be hidden by the flounces anyway. The lower flounce is many, many lengths of curtain sewn with French seams. I left the hemmed edge of the curtains and used my velvet trim, which I sewed on by hand to cover the stitch line. The upper flounce got basically the same treatment, but with the addition of the fringe. If you think it looks like it was difficult to work with, let me tell you, the reality was probably even worse than what you are imagining.
they were all trimmed and ready, I attached them to the skirt base. The lower one was gathered to fit, and the upper one was laid flat and surged to the base because it will be gathered into the waistband. Then I could finally sew that side seam shut. So I'll link the full destructions for gauging down below, but basically you fold over the top edge of the skirt, so at least two evenly spaced rows of running stitches by hand, and then when you pull up the threads you get nice little ridges. I decided to add a third row because I just love making more work for myself. Then, instead of sewing it to an encased waistband, you take a finished waistband and whip stitch the peak of each and every little ridge into place. The whole process took about a thousand years, but you do get a lot of fabric gathered into a small space with a smooth waistband, and all of your gathers stay nice and tidy. All right, so. I've done, it's a little uneven, but remember this is my first time doing this. About a quarter of the gauging. I'm gonna step back here because I had to put it down, but I pinned it all on the dress form just loosely at some points along the waistband there so I can get an idea of what it's gonna look like. And I am, I'm so excited for this. She's huge though. I think for someone as small as I am, this is a lot of dress, but step back a little more. But I'm I'm into that. I think one of my cats is underneath it. It's probably the orange one. I think he understands that this dress is as orange as he is. But like, oh, I am so excited. You can't see. It looks black because velvet just kind of absorbs all the light, but I, I love what the trim is doing. And I love that I, I chose to leave a little space. Oh, I'm so thrilled for this. She's cute, she's cute. Look at her, look at her. So once again, I spend the rest of my mortal life finishing this gauging. I will just have to add the hooks and bars and she will be done. <laughs> okay, <laughs> hello cleavage. So I am so thrilled with how this turned out. I feel like the lower half of a fashion plate. I already talked a little bit about what the things that I really love are, the things that I'm not as thrilled about. Um, a few more things. She's heavy. The corset is supposed to like help hold up the weight, but I can still really, really feel, feel it on my hips. So that's, <laughs> that's gonna be interesting. Um, also, the, the proportions are not exactly how I want. A 
lot of the fashion plates and surviving examples had the top tier longer and mine are about equal. That's just a minor irk. Um, also, this goes down to the hoop more than anything is the size <laughs> is massive, but I'm, I'm not mad about it. It's just if I was as striving for period correctness as I should, it's, um, that's pushing it. Uh, I am I'm really, really hoping I can finish a bodice for Dragon Con. Um, probably the evening bodice because the, you know, a little more air breathing and then I wouldn't need to make and wear a bonnet to have a complete outfit. But that was not even the plan. But who knows? Um, so if you enjoyed this and want to see more of this process, uh, go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Oh God. Oh, I can't reach the off button. Uh, 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 there.